Government Operations on Tuesday, Jan January, right, June 9th. Um, and we're the first thing we're going to do um, so that we can um, allow people to leave who don't need to sit through uh, with us for a long time. Um, I'm hoping that uh, Senator Hardy will join us. She said she would had a that she would be done hopefully by one, and then she has another meeting at two thirty. But I just want to say, and uh, committee members, I don't know if you agree with this or not, but. I think that when when Senator McCormick brought up the the issue this morning about the difference between the office and the officer, I, I think that it it suddenly gelled for me. And I did write a note to um, Ruth because the way I read it, it referred to the officer, and her intent was to refer to the office. So I think that um, with his his guidance there to look at that difference, I think we have a um, a solution. And did the committee? Did everybody get the proposed amendment that Betsy and Damian worked on? No, emailed, but we'll, we'll look it up. I emailed it um, at some, some point this, this yeah, morning, and then I, huh? Yes. Well, some of us stood up and went and had lunch. And sorry, haven't been on email. Is this the thing that says powers, C powers, the provost marshal? Yes, but then, but then there's um, from Chief Brickell. I thought I forwarded that to everybody. Yes, you did. It's right here. You did right. on po on powers. He he suggested changing powers to law enforcement authority. If you look at Chief Brickell's um, yeah. suggestion. Yeah. And Senator Bray, did you get that? Just, I sent it a little while ago. No, I'm sorry, Ms. Stull. I just connected through, pardon me. Okay, so if, if, if you look in your email, I, Gail, you could post it. I did send it to you. Uh, no, I don't think I have received it. I, re I received um, the chief's change, but not any new amendment. Is that correct? Well, that's the that's that that is the amendment. Okay. All right, I will post that with it's his not, with his. It's with not his. in a draft form from the attorneys. It's just his language, correct? No, no we, it's from Damian. We haven't Damien. drafted an official amendment yet. This is just. Uh, possible language that's been circulated. Okay. Um, so, but I can share, I can send you a document uh, if you would like. Um, I just have to leave it blank because I haven't gotten clearance from Senators Hardy and Perchlick to draft it as a substitute amendment yet. As I'm sure you're all familiar, everyone's been running around since the floor this morning. So, but I, I'll send you something in a minute, Gail, so that you can post it. Um, you, Damian? Chair, Madam Chair. Yes. Are you referring? So, for the thing that you're, <laughs> there's a lot of traffic on. on I know. The count. Um, is it the language from Chief Brickell that yep. you're looking at? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. The, the language came from Damien. <laughs> and then Chief Brickell had one comment, and he said, instead of using power, which is highlighted, use law enforcement authority. So the amendment did not come from Chief Brickell. It came okay. from Damien, but yeah. with the suggested change by chief, the chief. Yeah, if you scroll down, you'll see Damien's email to him. Thank you. So, uh, oh, there is Senator Hardy. Thank you, thank you. So. Senator Hardy, we were just uh, talking about how um, with the, I think, very astute observation this morning by Senator McCormick, we were talking like this. You, you were intending the office and the way I read it and the way others read it was it talked about the officer. 
So I think that um, we have some uh, suggested language here from Damien, and I think you got that. Yeah. Uh, yes, I did. I did. And I don't have it in draft form, but I have an email. Right. From yeah. Right. Yeah. And and also um, then there was the um, suggestion from Chief Brickell, and I think I I'm pretty sure I forwarded that to you also that instead of using power in the like the third to last word or something to use law enforcement authority. Uh, I don't see Ruth on your email, so I'm going to forward it to Ruth. Huh. I All just right. sent uh, Senator Hardy a version of that language. Yeah, uh, okay. I just am looking at it now. Um, So he, he wants to change exercising the powers. Is that to law, to law enforcement authority instead of using the word power? Oh, I see. Okay. So um, it, would read, it would read exercising law enforcement authority granted to officers working in that agency. I I, I would defer to Damien and Betsy Ann if they think that makes sense. Um, it I, seems fine to me, but. <laughs> Betsy Ann is nodding, so. And yeah. Damien is also, and his mouth is also moving. <laughs> yes, I, I think that that language uh, works. If anything, it's, it's more clear and I'm 99.5% I'm certain that Betsy agrees with me there. Her opinion is the more important one here. I am agreeing with Damien. I think it is a more specific reference to what, what the point of the amendment is. Yeah. So um, with that, if, if this were to be the, uh, I, we sh we'll leave that to Senator Hardy and Senator Perchlick, but if this were to be the amendment that was offered, where is the committee on it? Brian? I'm fine with it. Anthony? It worked, <coughs> excuse me, it's fine. Allison? Uh, <clears throat> I am grateful for all the senators and the surprising things they bring to our conversations and how they all help clarify things. And yes, I would say that this is, uh, this is great and I'm glad we've come to a resolution on it. Really? Chris? Chris? Um, Ken, so I, when I was emailing you folks this morning, I was talking about what, taking you know, two, two laps around the tree so can someone uh, now, uh, well, could the chair now explain uh, the goal of this additional uh, provision and what it is that we're um, ensuring, the, ensuring that it will happen and ensuring that it will not happen? So in my, the way I view this, and Damien and Betsy, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but why I uh, suggested that we look at the issue that was posed to us by Senator McCormick around the difference between looking at the role of the officer and the role of the office. And I think that we were looking at it in two different ways here. And the, in, my, in my opinion, we probably don't need to say that the provost marshal can only act as a provost marshal within the guard because the provost marshal as such has no authority upon civilians. But to make it clear, here it says that that office can only be used within the National Guard. And if the person is a certified officer and they're engaged with another law enforcement agency, they have all the right, the law enforcement authority conferred upon them by being a level three that right. they would have um, in their level three position. So it separates here the office and the officer. Is that what your concern was, Chris? No, no I'm just trying to see what we're addressing. So it is the- In real life, what, in, in real life, what does it mean? Yeah, I mean, it just means someone who's not a law enforcement officer in the state of Vermont otherwise, becomes a provost marshal or assistant, and then 
might have been construed as having power to act outside of the guard in a in, in a law enforcement capacity. Was that the concern that now we're hedging, we're building walls around it to hem that in? No, in my my concern was that by putting that language in, it wasn't specific enough to the role of the provost marshal, the role of it. And what it did is it limited the person from, from exercising law enforcement authority outside of the guard in a law enforcement position. Right, so I got it. Like a, a, a member of the guard happens to be a member of Montpelier PD. Yes. That would have messed up their ability to be a member of Montpelier PD as originally drafted. So the way I read it. Okay, or right, it created yeah. a problem. But for someone who's not a law enforcement officer, who's a member of the guard, was the concern that's now precluded by the new language that they might have acted in a law enforcement capacity outside of the guard, like that the language was too permissive. Is that what was driving this? I really, I'm having a little trouble on understanding what was driving the additional definition. Ruth, do you wanna to respond to that? Yeah, thank you, Jeanette. Um, uh, for, first, may I ask you, um, I think Senator Perchlick just emailed me and asked oh. me if he should join or could join. He um, could, yes. Gail, would you send him an invite? Thank you. Um, and second, so I just want to step back once uh, to answer your question, Senator Bray. Um, the, my original concern and why I, I, I in, you know, liked this amendment that I believe you all came up with in the first place, and then I kind of took it over, um, was that I wanted to make it clear that the provost marshal duties were for the guard only within the guard, and that that those duties wouldn't be exercised in a civilian capacity. So that was my concern, and um, it was the concern with the position of not the person, and that's where I think um, Senator White and I got, you know, confused with each other. Um, and this uh, way we're all communicating right now makes it even worse. Um, yeah. So, but to your point about if the individual is, so if the individual is a law enforcement agent, so if they are a Montpelier police officer and the provost marshal, those are two separate positions. They have duties for one and duties for the other. They can do both. They just, you know, don't want to cross the streams too much. You know, this makes it clear that there are separate positions. If if your if your scenario where somebody is not a law enforcement agent in Vermont but comes and it joins the National Guard and um, becomes the provost marshal, then that would be fine as long as they have the training and the the you know ability to be that position. Then they would just be the provost marshal, and wouldn't there wouldn't be a concern about ha that person having duties outside of the guard. Um, so it, it's about, it is, it has always been about the position, not the person, and it's just gotten confused. So. And I believe just to add to that, thanks Ruth, the, um, if the person in that, in your case here, came to Vermont, joined the guard, became, became certified as a level three officer and um, was the provost marshal, but was not connected to any outside law enforcement agency, that person would not have a statewide level three authority because in order to be a, a certified law enforcement agent um, officer, you have to be connected to a law enforcement agency in order to, to uh, carry out those duties and that authority. Am I right with that, Betsy? So you couldn't have, you can't have this rogue level three person running around there being um, a law enforcement agent officer without belonging to an agency. Right. The way that our law enforcement officer certification is set up is that a person has to be employed by a law enforcement agency in order to exercise law enforcement authority. Um, Obtaining that level three certification is the ability to exercise law enforcement authority, but it, you have to do so. You can't just hang out a shingle and be a private law enforcement officer. You have to be connected with an agency. 
And so if the provost marshal decided not to be connected to an outside agency or the provost marshal became a, was a full-time job so that that was their only responsibility, they would, that person would not have law enforcement authority outside of that position because they're not connected to another agency. Does that answer it, Chris? Um, pretty much, other than it, for me, it brings up the question of if this is already inherent in the law, why do we need to say anything right here? Like, what did we just add if it was already inherent in the law? I is think it, that it was added to make it clear that that there's a difference between the office and the officer here, and that the officer, were they employed by a law enforcement agency, it does not impede their ability to to exercise their law enforcement authority outside of in that capacity. It could be considered a belts and suspenders or like I like to say boots and suspenders. Why I don't know. But yeah, Ruth. Yeah, thank you for saying that, Jeanette. I was like resisting that um, that terminology, but um, and and also, uh, Chris. Just to be clear, I mean, one of the reasons that this was a concern for me is because we are creating two new um, positions, law enforcement enforcement positions. Um, it sounds like the intent of the adjutant general is that they would be filled by existing law enforcement officers. Um, but in the future, they could be full-time positions. And just to make it clear for future um, people who may be involved with these positions, that these are positions for within the guard only, not civilian positions. Does that answer everybody's questions? I think that, um, and I, I can't tell you, I was very grateful to Senator McCormick this morning for for pointing out that that we were talking about two different things here, the office and the officer, and making that very clear in my mind. And maybe no one else was confused by that. And if so, I apologize for confusing the issue, but I, I did not read it as related to the office, but to the officer, so. I think it was clarifying and that was helpful. I hadn't thought about the distinction either. And so the minute he said it, I, it, it was great. I, I thought it was very helpful. And I, I appreciate our taking the time to do this now. Okay, so I, it will be up to Senator Hardy and Senator Perchlick. Has he joined us? Senator Perchlick, are you with us? Can my mind's string a little slower than okay than yours um so i think just i want to check this out this is really maybe reading between the lines but i uh, i want to <laughs> make sure i'm not missing something or, or the the idea that we're adding officers right now is is that part i mean i'm almost feeling like that's a problem um that's behind some of this additional language, the, the notion of adding officers. And I think um, in part because there's a, a social context of um, concern about law enforcement at the moment and, and choices that some members of law enforcement agencies make. But so I want to make sure I'm not hearing that, but it's not quite explicit. Um, is that part of the concern that there should be no hiring right now? I, I don't know, I'll let Ruth answer that. Yeah, I mean, so Chris, yes. I mean, part of my concern was that um, in, uh, just one second, Damien, I was emailing you, you can share that with the committee if you want. <laughs> um, it's hard to do two things at the same time. Um, uh, Yes, yeah, so part of my concern was that right now we are uh, in a moment in time when there's a lot of concern about um, the role of police in, in our society. And so that was a red flag for me last week when this bill came up on the floor. It, it was a bill that creates two new law enforcement positions. 
Um, and so I wanted to make sure that, first of all, that the, that the positions uh, worked on an issue that, that was a concern with the guard, namely the sexual assault and harassment issue, which that was the first part of the amendment. And then the second was to make it, it abundantly clear that these positions were internal to the National Guard and that in fact, they would be used um, to make sure that the National Guard and the members of the Guard were acting appropriately and not breaking the law. And that's a good thing. It's sort of internal. And I think Senator Clarkson mentioned this on the floor today. Um, but to make it clear that these are not civilian law enforcement, you know, they're not, they don't have duties. These positions don't have duties outside the guard. The people might, but that's a different issue. It was like yeah. the positions <laughs> don't have duties outside of the guard. And so the creation of two new law enforcement positions are, is for the purpose of making sure that our, our law enforcement and our military are behaving well. And that's a good thing, especially these days. So that that was really what was behind this and the confusion about the people in the positions. Um, it's unfortunate that it got this long before we figured that out. And I'm yes, grateful to Senator McCormick for pointing that out. Does that help you, Senator Bray? Sure. I mean, I think, you know, what I worry is that it feels, and maybe this is so I'll just say it this way, it feels a little negative in, in the, from the side of, of being concerned about hiring anyone into law enforcement at the moment. We worked for years to get a special investigation unit in, um, in Addison County, and those were hires that we fought for. So um, to be sort of tapping the brakes on hiring feels a little broad brush. Now, someone could say, well, you're not paying attention to this moment in history. I'd say, uh, whatever. I, I don't, I, I think we can do both. And I don't want to be impugning anyone who's in law enforcement, nor any potential hire into it, because there's a mixture of people in, in those positions. That's it. I, I don't, I don't think that this, um, the way this has worked out here, I, we are creating two new positions. And if Senator Hardy and Senator Perch use this um, amendment, um, they are agreeing that we're creating these two new positions. Um, and that they're, the positions, the positions themselves are are within the National Guard. The it could be a part-time level three certified person in the National Guard that is a um, landscaper during the rest of his time. He's not connected to a law enforcement agency outside, but is still a level three certified officer. So we're we're differentiating here the positions and the person. And I think that um, so I, I, I don't know, I, there are, believe me, there are going to be plenty of opportunities for us in, the, in this next week to talk about every single, I have three pages of recommendations that I've gotten here so far from people about the training council and what we should do and what we shouldn't do. And we're gonna have to tackle those, um, excuse me, starting tomorrow. So, um, but in this case, I think that it's pretty clear that we are creating two new positions. The positions are within the guard and the person in the non-guard role can work within the scope of practice, whether it's as a law enforcement officer connected to an agency or a landscape artist or, or a um, childcare worker. I mean, I mean it, Yep. No, so thanks for spending the extra time. I think um, if I keep my eyes on the language itself, then that's yes. simpler for me. I, I think that that's the best thing to do at this point in this discussion and with this issue is to keep our eyes on the language and nothing behind that or between the words. Ruth? Yeah, 
Thanks. I just want to add to um, is that, you know, I have uh, been in constant communication with the general with General Knight since he was appointed or since we elected him. Um, I seconded his nomination and he is one of my constituents and I've talked to him frequently about how we can make sure that the guard is, um, you know, improving its operations. And I think this is part of that ability. And I just want to make sure that it's focused on that um, so that the guard can be as strong and as ethical as possible. So um, this is not about, you know, bashing on the guard or bashing on these positions. It's about making sure that they're focused on the thing we need them to be focused on. Thank you. And I appreciated your um, slip of the tongue there when you said appointed. And I wish we could um, convince the house to agree with us and do it, but we are locked into a never ending conference committee. So, so I guess that um, I don't see if Senator Perchlick, uh, Betsy Ann, did you, are you waving goodbye? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, we're supposed to be in Senate Propes at 1.30, so I'm going to head over there now oh. for the OPR. Oh, yes, I am too. Okay. I am too. I'll to head justify. over there now and let them okay. know that you're wrapping up. And okay. You'll come so over you, when you're able. I will come over. So committee, Are we, wrap, are we no, wrapping? No, not necessarily. You get to sit here and keep talking. Uh, Senator and you can was is here. Huh? Yeah. Senator Perchlick is here. Okay. Yeah. Yes. There you are, indeed. So um, I guess, uh, committee, I, I do have to run over to um, across the hall. And um, you can, I don't think we had anything else on for today, except I, I was hoping to have some discussion about where we would go next week, this week with um, the law enforcement issues and the pay act. And right. I think I think that's really what we have looming are those two issues. And then um, but you can have that you can start having that discussion if you want, or we can put off the discussion and just do a um, an email um, agenda. I would be I, mean, I would vote to put it off for now. The other, the other possibility would be if you wanted to come back at like when you were done at approach, you know, we could take a break and you could, we'd come back together again at 2.30 or something like that. Okay. I don't That's think an idea. I don't know. Much. I mean, I've been doing these things since 7.30 this morning, so I wouldn't mind taking a break. Okay. So what, what if we took a half hour um, yeah. break here? Why don't we come back at 2? Okay. We'll do. And then in the meantime, maybe Senator Hardy and Senator Perchlick can decide what they're going to do with the amendment and then we can take a position on it. That okay. would be great. It would be great to be done with this today. Yeah. Okay. okay. Andy, I'll we're call gonna, you. We're going to get the constables in this bill. Just checking. Hope so. So does that mean Gail puts out another invitation for two o'clock, or do we just sort of put up that sign that says we're on break? I, I think you I put, put up the, the sign that says that we're on break, so that everybody who wants to participate already has the uh, yeah okay. information. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. I'll right. see you in a little while. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. In a bit. All right. So let's go to our um, amendment here. And Senator Hardy, would you like to present it to us, or have Damian and Be or Betsy walk us through it, or how would you like to proceed? Um, they can walk you, one. Whoever wants to walk you through it would be fine with me. Okay. Thank you. Do you have a preference, Betsy? You want me to? Okay. Um, Gail, is it possible to put it up on the screen? Or does everyone have a well, copy uh, of it in front of I, them? I, we I have actually, it in front of us. I actually prefer having it on my other com on my computer because otherwise I lose contact with everybody. No problem. I don't like I, things uh, on the screen. And this is the one that says unedited draft, right? Yes. Right. That's right. Yeah, we all have it. Yep. So the the language in C, um, the first sentence is identical to the bill that the committee voted out. Uh, the second sentence is identical up to the words maybe exercise statewide. And then the new language 
with respect to criminal activity in the National Guard only is the language that Senator Hardy and Senator Perchlick proposed in uh, the first version of the amendment. And then the sentence following that is brand new. And that would provide that nothing in the subsection shall be construed to prevent an individual serving as the provost marshal or assistant provost marshal from working as an officer in another law enforcement agency or from exercising the law enforcement authority granted to officers working in that agency. May I just ask one question? Why did we say uh, the powers and immunities uh, conferred on the state police in capital letters instead of um, other law enforcement, other level three law enforcement agent uh, officers? I, I took that language from other existing law enforcement officer okay. statutes. So, and the state police uh, refer to, they have the same powers and immunities as granted to sheriffs. Yeah. Um, so it's, it is a little bit circular the way everything refers back, okay. but I think it's stopped okay. with sheriffs, right, Betsy? What was the last thing? I, I think all of the powers and immunities ultimately refer back to the sheriffs, right? You're now. correct. Yeah, and I think that's because they were our first law enforcement officers okay. in the state. What about constables? Oh, maybe constables. I, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> Ruth, we have quite a history with constables in this committee, so that's why we always yeah. refer to them. I'd say so, we have a history with all of us <laughs> sheriffs. Um, so, uh, Senator Hardy and Senator Perchlick, um, are you going to offer this amendment? And is it what you would what you like? Yes, I think our plan is to offer this amendment and it looks good to me and, and Senator Perchlick had looked at it over email and he and I spoke in this interim time just to make sure. Um, and so our intention is to offer the amendment and we would like to have the support of the committee. Um, so thank you for your consideration. Um, committee? Yes. Oh, what? Uh, would you like a motion? Well, I would like I would like us to decide first whether we are supportive or whether there are other questions, and then we can have a motion. So, if there are other questions or concerns, we're fine with it. Chris Bray. Well, so I'll ask my question again. It's kind of the same same question. This sentence right in the smack in the middle. Powers granted the provost marshal and assistant provost marshal under the section shall be exercised statewide with respect to criminal activity and National Guard only. If it didn't say that, have we somehow implied that? Like, do we have to say that only because somewhere we implied something broader than that? I thought by virtue of how we drafted that that was what this job was all about. Guard, National Guard. That's who you are, so, that's who you work for, that's what you're working on. So I, I think the, the initial confusion came because the initial language was the powers granted to the provost marshal and assistant provost marshal under the section may be exercised statewide. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Or, yes. Okay, just making sure I, um, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't uh, interpreting some of the way people look there at that, uh, the sound on this headset is sometimes wonky. So um, the, uh, so originally with that language may be exercised statewide. Um, I think what this was a response to was there was concern that even though the guard stated intention was to use it within the guard uh, and to use it as a liaison with civil authority, the way it was worded, uh, the, the provost marshal could be carrying out civil law enforcement um, on a statewide basis, the same as a state trooper and so forth. And the language kind of matched up to language for state troopers or other law enforcement officers. Um, so the, and I, I don't wanna put words in Senator Hardy's mouth here, but um, my understanding is that 
be with respect to criminal activity in the National Guard only is just expressing the intent that this position is focused internally on the National Guard, even though they have the level three um, law enforcement um, certification and authority. Uh, it's just within the National Guard that they're supposed to exercise that regardless of what they might do for their full-time job, because these are going to be drilling guard members, meaning that they have a full-time job. Very likely they're going to be state troopers or local police officers or deputy sheriffs um, who then do this position part-time. So it's, it was meant to clarify and reflect the intent of the guard so that 10 years from now when no one was present for the conversation, um, people would still understand uh, what the intent was. So I don't know if that satisfies uh, your may, concern, but that's my understanding. May, may I make a suggestion? When I read it, it still tells me that the, pro, the provost marshal and the assistant provost marshal are still only able to do law enforcement within the National Guard. In my humble opinion, it should say the powers granted to the office of the provost marshal and the office of assistant provost marshal. To make it very clear that it's the office of the provost marshal that we're talking about that only has that authority. And then the following statement that clarifies that not if they are law enforcement outside of that role, they do have that law enforcement authority. I like that. <laughs> yes, and I, I think it calls out Dick's catch and uh, clarifies it yet further. Ruth? I guess my my concern with that is that the, it's this whole paragraph the, with the powers starts out by saying the provost marshal and the assistant provost marshal shall have the same powers yes. and immunity. So that should, that, according to your addition, that would say the office of the, should say the office of the provost marshal and the office of the assistant provost marshal. So my concern with putting the office of before each time is that we would have to do it throughout to make, and that, because then there would be confusion of when do they say the office and when do they say just the provost marshal. Do you know do you see what I mean? I, I, I get that, but I think that the, the provost marshal and the uh, assistant provost marshal do have the same powers as conferred on the state police as the person themselves, but it's the office that only has authority within the um, to act within the and that may that may be just too confusing, but I think it still looks to me the last sentence clarifies it some, but it still looks to me like the um, Anyway, I, I'm, I think we've spent right. enough time on this. I don't know how to resolve this, but I want it to be very clear that the person is a level three certified officer. So they have all those uh, same uh, duties and immunities that a state police officer would have. That person themselves has that. But the office itself can only operate within, or maybe the, Maybe it's fine the way it is. I, I'll leave that to smarter minds than mine. So I, I would say that um, just for consistency with other statutes, I mean, even if you look at the rest of this bill, typically we'll say the commissioner shall have the following powers. The, the secretary shall have the following powers. The adjutant general shall have the following powers and duties. We don't say the office of okay. unless we're referring to um, you know, something much broader like the Office of the Attorney General, which includes all of the uh, assistant AGs or something like that. So I, I think it's implicit okay. that when you say Provost Marshal and Assistant Provost Marshal, um, because above in this we say the Adjutant General may appoint to serve as Provost Marshal. So Okay. And then it goes on to say an officer who holds the following rank and has the following certification. Um, okay. So it's kind of, you know, saying it, that it is a specific position. Um, and then I think the third sentence again makes that implication clear yeah. when it says the individual serving as. 
Um, so I, I, I think we're okay as is. Okay. Um, I, I do understand your concern though about, you know, uh, am I the provost marshal or am I the individual serving in that office? Well, you're um, both. You're both, just like we are as legislators. We are both representatives of our community, but we are individuals voting bills. So the, we make those decisions every day. As both yeah. the office holder and as the individual holding that office. Well, I'm I'm okay with this language if Damien and Betsy are are okay with it. I think they're it's it that's that uh, last sentence that was added helps me um, a lot and uh, we, we have, um, we could use a lot of examples, but we, we're senators and we make decisions, but we don't have any authority outside of the, outside of the Senate to act, to do anything. All, we only can act in our official capacity. We can't do anything outside of that, except in our other jobs. So anyway, I'm fine if Damien and Betsy are okay. So committee? Yes. Yes. No. Chris? Um, <laughs> I'm just neutral. I'm not gonna get past neutral. I still find something, um, well, I'll stick to the language here. It's. In and of itself, I, I, I'd say, okay, it provides more specificity. Um, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. Okay. All right, so um, with that, I think that we can probably say we support this amendment. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And Anthony, if you would like to speak to that on the floor when, we, when it comes up. But Ruth is going to present the amendment. Right. And you, you can give our right. committee response? Sure. OK. Thank you. Thank you all Thank you. so much. And uh, I'm, I'm grateful that we got to a point of clarification. And I appreciate you sticking with the conversation and taking this time. So thank you very much, everybody. And especially thanks to Damien and Betsy Ann for uh, getting us language that, that works for everyone. Yes, and th thanks to Dick Thank too. You. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. See you later. So, committee. To, to um, be clear, I, I don't know that I want to say I'm supporting this language. I said I was neutral. Uh, we don't have a neutral vote button in, around this joint. I know that. But. Anthony could just say the majority then. Yeah, I could say the majority. Or you could say we don't oppose. <laughs> well, I, I, well, we actively opposed it before, so I, that. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just trying to be clear. I don't want to misrepresent my position and say, oh, well, I just uh, sort of rolled myself into supporting something that I don't, but I'm not going to speak against it or vote against it. So. Is your issue about adding two new positions? No, my position is what I uh, was saying earlier this morning, where I feel like we've, we've had an, an adjutant general who came in saying he wanted to tackle certain issues, which he has. Um, my sense is based on many, many visits with him and his staff that he's uh, about doing an exemplary job and that what we've engaged in is telling, uh, things, expressing instructions that I don't think needed to be expressed because he was already doing them. And uh, so I, I don't know why we would go out of our way to tell someone who's doing something to, to please do that thing. And then the coloring of the whole question around um, and law enforcement is, that to me is not feels inappropriate. You know, it's like I'm not interested in sort of and somehow expressing a sentiment that worries about adding law enforcement. <laughs> uh, 
That's well, all. I think that hey. hopefully that won't be part of the, the right. presentation. Yeah, yeah. But we, well, I, we I can't think, control you know, that. Right. And that's why I said, you have, if we come back to the language in and of itself, then that's fine. But there's been a story around the language and how it was brought, conversations around it. And um, that's what I have to step away from and just mm -hmm. leave it at that. You know, I'd say <laughs> the thing, probably part of it for me that's a little challenging too is five generations of my family have served in the US military. When you see someone serving and doing their job, I think one of the respecting that work is not, um, not for the politicizing and managing them from outside. Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I agree with you and I think that, and there might be questions about immunity and all kinds of things that come up on the floor. Um, I am prepared to answer that question if, unless somebody else wants to. Okay. Okay. So. Anyway, now I've said my piece, I can go on to our discussion of constables. <laughs> so it's General so Neither, you, I, I see you're still with us. Are you okay with this? Yes, ma'am. The guard is, is good with the amendment as written. I'd also like to echo my appreciation to Senator Hardy, Senator Perchlick, and, and Senator McCormick, and certainly the committee uh, for getting us to this point. So uh, very much appreciated, and thanks for what you do. Thank, Thank you. you.